Hello guys, welcome back to Learning Microcontrollers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a PIC16 FA77A microcontroller to control the speed of a DC motor using PWM. I am going to use the half wheel configuration as done in the previous video of the same playlist. So let's get started. So guys, this is our PIC16 FA77A microcontroller having 40 pins It's a DIP version. This is our TIP 122 NPN transistor. I am going to use this because my motor is small. If you have a bigger motor, you can use a bigger transistor while the connections and programming will remain the same. So guys, this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor I am going to use. You can use any resistor from 100 ohm to up to 10 kilo ohm. So this will be used to drive the transistor from PIC. This is a diode 1 and 4001. You can use any diode having a rate, minimum rating of 0.5 ampere of current. This is a DC power supply or a battery. So maximum voltage for the battery must be must not exceed 30 volt for the TIP 122 NPN transistor. In case you have a bigger transistor, then uh, you can use a higher voltage and a higher current ratings. That doesn't matter. This is uh, guys is a motor I'm going to use. This is a small motor, DC motor, easily available in the market. You can also use other motors, bigger motors with the same configuration. Then you have to change the transistor and the power supply. That is a battery. Rest connection wiring programming will remain the same. Now guys, uh, a transistor TIP 122 NPN has three pins. Uh, you can also refer for this to the data sheet as well. Uh, the place on the transistor there is a writing. You can see that it's written TIP 122. From the place where the writing start to its opposite end pin that is a emitter pin. The pin that is in the center is a collector. The leftmost pin from where the writing start is the base pin. Now guys, uh, motor always has two terminals, one positive and one negative. You can also shuffle these two to control the, uh, to change the speed, or sorry, to change the direction of this motor. You can shuffle these two pins if you want. In the half lift configuration, you cannot control the direction of motor by using programming. So you have to simply do it using the wiring. So if you want a different direction, then you simply shuffle these two wires. A battery always has two terminals, one positive, one negative. Now guys, let's do the connections. You connect the base pin of the transistor with one end of your resistor, then the other end of the resistor will go to the pin number 17, that is the CCP1 PWM1 pin of your PIC microcontroller. You cannot choose any available digital input output pin or ADC pin for this purpose. You have to choose only the specific pins, that is the CCP1 pin on the data sheet called PWM1 pin. And there is another PWM pin called CCP2 pin as well. You can also do, use that pin as well. That will be the PWM2 channel in the programming. Rest will remain the same. So guys, uh, now let's connect, connect the transistors. Collector pin, the collector pin of the transistor will go to the one end of the diode. And this end of the diode is the opposite end to this cut. Remember that this is the anode end. The opposite end to the cut is the anode. And at this end, you have to connect the collector directly. Then the other end of the diode will go to the positive terminal of the battery. From the same terminal, that is the positive terminal of the battery, you will send a wire to the one terminal of the motor. Now guys, the emitter pin of your TIP 122 NPN transistor will go to the negative of the battery. And then the other end of the motor that was empty will go to the collector pin of the TIP 122 NPN transistor. And last, the ground pin of your PIC16 FA77A will go to the emitter pin of the transistor. Now guys, in the previous video, we stopped here and we went for the programming. But in this video, we are going to add a potentiometer as well. This potentiometer will be used to control the speed of this motor. When we rotate this potentiometer, the speed will increase. And when we will rotate it in the opposite direction, the speed will decrease. Now, guys, you can use any potentiometer from 5 kilo ohm up to 50 kilo ohm. I'm going to use a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer. And you can use even better potentiometers having more precision. That will be more precise in controlling the speed. So let's get started. See that this potentiometer has three pins. The pin in the center is always the variable pin. This will be the adjustable pin. You will connect it to any available ADC pin of your PIC microcontroller. For this purpose, I am going to use the pin number A0. This is the ADC channel number 0. That is a pin 2 of your PIC16 FA77A microcontroller. Now, rest of the two pins, one to the left and one to the right of this ADC pin are positive and negative. You can shuffle these two pins if you want. If you shuffle them, then only the direction of rotation will have the opposite impact. Like, like in case you're in case your 
when you rotate the potentiometer to the clockwise, your speed of the motor increases. But if you shuffle these two pins, that is the first and the last, not the center, then it will become opposite. When you rotate it in the clockwise, the speed will increase. And in the anti-clockwise, that is only the difference. So you can shuffle these two pins to control the direction of this potentiometer. I am going to use this configuration. So the positive pin will go to the positive supply of your PIC microcontroller, that is the VCC pin, pin number 11. And the negative will go to the common ground, that is a pin number either 12 or 31 of your PIC microcontroller. In this way, our connections are completed. Now, guys, let's get to the micro C for PIC and also let me show you the hardware as well. Guys, this is the hardware. This is our PIC 16 f 7 microcontroller. Uh, this is the uh, motors I am going to use only. And this is a TIP 122 NPN transistor. And this is a fixed 15 volts power supply I'm going to use, like 14.4. So let's get to the programming. And this is the potentiometer here. You can see when I will rotate it, the speed of the motor will change as per programming. So let's get to the programming. So This is our micro C for pick. Go to the start. Let me zoom in for you. So the vision is 7.2.0. You can use any vision as you prefer. You can even use the older vision as well. I click on new, new project. This window will pop up. See, now click on next. Write the name of your project. I write three motor learning microcontroller port three and the crystal is 20 megahertz. Click on next, finish. Now, guys, since it is a second video of this playlist, what I'm going to do is that I will go to the right and the system libraries, I will check mark. ADC because in the previous video we didn't have the potential meter so we didn't use the ADC pins. Now we have to select the ADC library as well and the second one is as usual PWM library. Now go to the internet YouTube. Now guys this is the link of the my previous video I will share with you in the description as well. This is the first video of this playlist as you can see and the playlist is also available. So from there in the description of that video, you can copy this code that we used in the previous video. We will simply modify it now. You copy this, you go to your new video, new programming, you paste it in here like this. Now guys, what you do is that since you can see the code here, PWM1 was initialized, initialization delay, the initial value was 255, you delete it, then you delete this. You also delete this and here you just make it like this. Now the new thing is a potentiometer. So we initialize the ADC pins. So you go to the ADC library, click on ADC extended ADC I in IQ, you double click. It will lead you to this page. In the example, you copy this. You copy this and you paste it right above the PW1 pin. Also give this some initialization delay. If you give it, it's good. If you don't, doesn't matter, but I prefer you give some delay if possible, like this. Now, the newer versions ask you to save on auto. So you have to save as, select a suitable place where you want to save the project. So it's saved. Now guys, Here we have our code. Now we need the ADC value to be read. For that purpose, again, go to the library. In the library, you have this ADC read command there. You double click it. And in the example, you copy this command. Now this command is copied right above in the forever loop. You have to write it. Now you need a variable in which your ADC value will be stored. You write float pot. This will store the value of the pot. That will be pot. And from channel 0. Now pod is the variable in which your variable will be stored from which channel? 0 because we selected the pin number A0 on the 
uh, microcontroller as shown in the presentation. If you use the A1, then you, this will become 1. Now, the values are since the ADC is 10 bit, 10 bit ADC, so 2 power 10 is equal to 1024 max value. So, whenever the potentiometer is rotated, the maximum value that we will get is 1024. But the problem is the duty. This is maximum 255. We cannot exceed the duty max duty cycle for this is equal to 255. So, there is a problem now. So, we have to do some mathematics here. So, whenever the pot values is exceed, we go to the calculator. Open the calculator. In the calculator, you write down the maximum value of your ADC that is 1024 and then divided by the maximum value of your PWM that is the duty is maximum duty is 255. So, when we divide it, we get 4.01 answer. Now, we take it 4.1. So, we take another variable like float PER percentage and we write per is equal to whatever the value of pot is divided by 4.1. So, so, the maximum value of this ADC that is 1024 when divided by 4.1, it will become C divide 1024 by 4.1. So, 1024 divided by 4.1, it is 249. So, the maximum value is like 250. So, it is within our range, rest will be small. So, we replace this by our per PR. And we no longer need this variable called duty here like this. So, in this way, our new code is written. Now, what, what is going to happen is that we will read value from the ADC that is a potentiometer value. We will bring it in, in within the range of our duty cycle that is the 255. So, we divide it by 4.1 whatever the value is received. And then for the duty cycle, we will enter the value received. So, whenever we will rotate the potentiometer, it will also set the duty cycle. So, when we will increase it, it will increase and it will increase the speed of the motor. So, let us get to the hardware. So, guys, this is our motor and hardware. We build the code and then we will burn it using the Picket 3 programmer. So, click on build here. The code is built. There are no errors. So, now we use Picket 3, this programmer. Pic 16 fa 7 a is the one we are using. Go to the import. Select the code you just wrote. And click on write. Okay, the new code is being written. So, let us get to the hardware and see what happens. So, let us see what happens. See, it is rotating. I rotate the potentiometer. See, it slows down, it stops. Now, I rotate it in the opposite direction. See, it starts rotating slowly. See, when I rotate it more, speed increases. I rotate more, speed increases more. See, the more I rotate the speed, now this is the maximum speed. Now I go in the opposite direction. See, the speed is changing. It is slowing down, I am rotating. Now I leave it here, it will keep on moving in the same speed. See, I leave the potentiometer. It will keep on moving in the same speed. Now again, I rotated further, see the speed slows down further. You can see that speed has slowed down further. Now, I rotate more potentiometer, it slows down even further. And now, I rotate more and bring it to a very slow speed. You can see the speed is very slow now. So, it is directly being controlled by the potentiometer. We are controlling the speed of a DC motor using a potentiometer. See, it is very slow speed now. Now, I rotate it further, it will go more slow. This is like very, very slow now. I rotate it further. See, the speed is more slow now. See, it's very slow now. It's like very, very slow. In case it was moving, it was to be very slow speed. Now, I rotate it further. See, it's more slow now. Now, this is where the accuracy of potentiometer comes into play. If it is a good potentiometer having good uh, linearity, then you can even go to more speeds. Now, I start moving in the, in the opposite direction. See, again, the it speeds up. I move it further, it starts to speed up. I move it further, move. Now, this is the maximum, maximum speed. 
now we are rotating in the opposite direction see it is flowing down it is slow speed i rotated more it slows down further further i rotate more slows down further and then stops now this is like zero speed and at this time the motor is stopped again i rotate and it starts moving like this so guys i hope you learned something from this video thank you very much for your time and interest in my channel hope to see you in the future videos as well so have a nice day